Hello everyone, uh, once again. So yes, uh, as I've already been introduced, I'm, I'm today talking about the architecture or how uh, to improve it uh, with the CDC concept. So the CDC is a change data capture. So today we are going to talk about um, um, that concept and uh, how we you can use it uh, in your project, uh, even uh, without writing much code and how you can improve your architecture. So let's go. Uh, so about me, I'm uh, Mateusz Dymiński, I work at Nokia. I uh, came from the Java world uh, because I've got lots of experience in that, but uh, nowadays I, I usually write uh, code in Go or um, uh, in, uh, I, I maybe I'm more even DevOps right now than the um, solder developer, but all in all, I'm also the, one of the organizer of the GoBrots, so go uh, GoLang Brots of Meetup. Uh, if you would like to talk with me or have a question to me, then of course you can, you can catch me on my webpage or GitHub or Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever. So uh, that's about me. So let's go to the, and let's jump to the topic of today's uh, talk. So uh, agenda uh, today, I will start with the definition of what it is, uh, what are the types of the change that I capture and how to, um, how to use it. Yeah. And then uh, it's not that for free, you can, um, you can turn it on in a DB, but you need to sometimes do something. Okay. So we'll try to analyze with uh, some most common um, uh, databases, how to do that. And then we talk about the tooling. So what to do uh, and what tools might help you to make it happen, to, to make uh, the whole flow uh, of the events uh, flowing through your systems. Yeah. So, so we will cover some tools and then we'll go to and jump to the architect architecture concepts. Yeah. So we'll, we'll talk about the streaming and some kind of uh, microservice communications where this, um, the CDC might have, might help uh, and uh, two nice patterns like out the box and strand strangler. Um, and then we'll, uh, we'll talk about the challenges. So sometimes it's not that easy. Sometimes uh, there are some some problems and sometimes um, you need to do uh, you need to be wary about some some you know drawbacks of the CDC so we'll cover that and then the summary okay so um, more or less that's it about today's talk so let's go uh, we'll start from the from the slides uh, which are already available and also the code which is a really small code which I'm going today uh, show you is also at my GitHub. So if you would like to, um, you know, uh, you know, if you plan to make some screenshots, then you don't need to. Okay, uh, you can just go there and uh, have a look at the presentations. I made some small changes, and I'm going to commit them just after the presentations. So um, if you would like to, then go there and, and take it. So let's start from the definition. Okay, change data capture. So what's the change data capture is? <clears throat> okay, so uh, all in all, it's like a design pattern um, uh, which uh, is used to determine and track the data and if something has changed usually in your database then you need to be somehow notified okay so you need to track all the changes so basically um, if something happened in your database some new thing is inserted or updated or deleted then you need to be uh, somehow it, it needs to be stored somewhere and then you need to take it and use it and um, somehow know that something has changed, okay? So it's quite easy. I mean, the concept is quite easy. You shouldn't have um, uh, much doubts about that. Uh, so let's try to analyze what are the types of the change data capture, and then probably it's going to be more clear for you based on the types, uh, okay? So the first one is triggered base, quite old, and uh, it's not very popular nowadays. And then there's uh, query based. So it's sometimes it's like a polling, so you need to call it. And then we'll, we'll, um, we'll jump into the log based, which is um, the one which is uh, the most important from our perspective and from today's presentations, okay? So, but from the historical perspective, let's see how it was um, done you know, years ago and um, uh, somewhere at the beginning of the, you know, the history of the databases where, where people also uh, try to analyze what is happening and try to convert every single change into a kind of event. Okay. So um, the, the, the quite old concept was this triggered base. So basically you need to write some function inside your database, which is a run 
uh, or a fire when something happened. Okay, so then you can you can you can say that okay, if something uh, is going to be inserted in this particular database, uh, in this particular table, then uh, this trigger is run, and this trigger usually copies this um, uh, this record to the uh, uh, some new uh, or artificial artificially created table okay uh, and um, with that you need to also pull this new table okay so then you've got for example event table with all the changes and then you need to pull it okay so you can you, you need to make a query to the database say okay please give me the um, uh, you know, new events uh, which uh, has changed in uh, your database okay so it's quite cumbersome and problematic and also it's a vendor specific yeah so you need to if you've got two, two databases like a Postgres and MySQL, then you need to write um, uh, write a uh, you know um, a trigger for in, uh, inside the MySQL and the Postgres. Okay, a bit problematic, and it requires the polling. So we need to every single time call this day, uh, like query this this table. Problematic. Okay. The second one is uh, just query based. So you need to, you don't have um, uh, the artific artificial table, but you just every single x seconds you query the DB. Uh, or a table to get the changes okay so it's very problematic because of the performance because you are not now checking the artificial table but the main table so the main table is also somehow blocked and uh, and uh, when someone is writing so then it's quite slow and uh, and it's not very good okay and it also requires the polling and also you need to have a way how to determine the difference if the table is huge then you need to calculate lots of things um, uh, for example some kind of timestamps you need to track on your client side when you have uh, when when you finished and um, what uh, what changes you need to take so not the best way okay and then the third uh, types of the cdc which is log based which is the best i guess uh, so it's based on the val or wal red logs or a bin log okay so what's that the, these files are created by the database under the hood yeah probably <clears throat> um uh, if you're just you know using your db you don't uh, need to even know that these files exist but uh, they are very important from the database perspective why because um when the database is um, doing something uh like inserting something then um usually it starts from writing to the, these files okay so these uh, files are uh, like a history of all the changes inside the database so if someone is creating the transactions then the information that the transactions has started then this 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 in this field is going to be for example inserted in that table and all these things are stored in that files and why this files is important because for example, let's imagine that you've got a power cut or you've got uh, out of memory exception at your you know, VM or uh, Docker or anything, and then uh, something bad happened okay, to your database. And then uh, database needs to restart, um, needs to be restarted, and then you need to uh, somehow um, uh, make a again the clear state okay and make uh, make it still and again working even though you were in the middle of the transaction when the power cut happened okay so then the, the, the these files like uh, wal or red logs or bin logs are analyzed one by one and then the whole uh, the database is going to apply all the changes one by one and then um, uh, somehow resurrect your db okay <clears throat> and with that uh the cdc might reuse these files okay so all the changes are there okay every single thing every single um event which happened in your db is in these files okay so so someone someone figured out that maybe let's reuse these files and um, and somehow make action okay so let's subscribe let's make a possibility to to the external clients of db to subscribe to this data and then we might just send the all the changes to the to the clients of the db as well so that's a very good and nice concept okay so there's no polling because the db when something happened in this red log is just um, inform you okay so that the, it's, it's like more reactive and also it's transparent so for example, let's imagine that you've got a you know a legacy application, and then this legacy application <clears throat> uh, wants to you know jump into the CDC world, and you don't need to touch anything in your application. You might just change something in the DB, and then 
uh, voila, you, you might, you know, emit the events that something happened to your DB. Okay, so that's nice. And uh, of course, um, uh, the events are, are sent to the subscribers. It's kind of reactive, yeah. So, so you don't need to be like it's not passive. It's not um, uh, you know polling. It's it's you just inform when something happened. Okay. So that's the log base, and this is something which uh, on which the the, the uh, all the tools are based, and this is really nice thing. Okay. So let's imagine that we've got the SQL database and, and uh, table. Table is called users, very primitive one. ID, first name, last name, created that. Very, very easy to grasp. And let's imagine that someone entered um, the um, <clears throat> uh, insert the user. Uh, so it's like first name, last name, John Rambo, and that's it. Okay. So if you've got um, um, that information, so what uh, you might get from the CDC tools is for example, like that, okay? So now you've got information. What was the type of the event? So it was insert. What is the schema? What's the table? And um, yeah, what are the column names and column types? Okay, so now we've gonna, we know that the ID is in like integer and the first name is text and last name text and created that is a timestamp, okay? And these are the values, okay? So you've got everything. You've got, you've got information. What has been added to which table? The schema, everything. Okay. And on that, you can, you know, build really nice things and really nice architectures. Okay. Uh, we'll cover that later on. So, uh, you might imagine what will happen on the update. Okay. And also, one more thing here uh, regarding the inserts. So, this uh, uh, JSON, which is um, created um, um, here at this slide, is created by the plugin to the uh, to the Postgres, which is called uh, WAL to uh, JSON, so so WAL to JSON, so that's the plugin which is installed next to the DB, and then you are uh, able to emit that kind of um, uh, JSONs. Okay, so this uh, particular example is based on this particular plugin, so that's to be clear. And um, uh, yeah. So let's go to the update. Okay, so you might imagine what will happen when you update the users and you set the last name to Kowalski, then uh, what happened is just we'll get a kind update. Uh, schema tables is the same, column names are the same because now we are getting everything, but instead of Johnny Rambo, we are, we are getting John Kowalski. And we see that um, the old key was one, so but it's also the current one, yeah. So that's the way how it's how it's emitted, how this event is looks like, okay. And then delete accordingly, delete users, but you're not getting all the information, but only the ID, yeah. So ID of the table which was deleted, okay. So that's quite clear, and uh, yeah, that's nice. So, but. As I mentioned, there was a plugin, there was uh, something which we need to turn on in the DB. So there is an, it's not always that it's automatically turned on. Okay. So we need, sometimes we need to do something. Okay. So let's, let's try to analyze what needs to be done in that base like Postgres to make this CDC happen. Okay. So in the first and the most important thing is the uh, WAL level it needs to be set at least logical because <clears throat> it's, um, by default, because of the performance um, uh, things, well, performance um, uh, factor, the default uh, WA level is set to a lower one than the logical, okay? And uh, you need to set it to the logical. If not, then not uh, everything which needs to be, um, uh, which is required by the CDC uh, is in this uh, WAL uh, file, okay? Uh, so sometimes you need to set something, okay? In this particular example, you need to set it to logical and this uh, max replication slot needs to be at least one. By default, it's one, but if you would like to have multiple CDC tooling uh, attached to the same database, it, it might be even bigger than the one. And uh, Postgres version 9.4, okay? So from the Postgres version 9.4, they allowed to install the plugins. Okay, so the plugins like this uh, Val to JSON uh, are allowed to be installed in the Postgres, and 
also starting from uh, Postgres 10, there is also built-in CDC, which is called PG Output, where you can just uh, subscribe to the events without the plugins, okay? So that's the, um, that's the ways how you can do that. So you can install the plugin, and there's uh, plenty of these plugins available on the market, and also there's a built-in, at least in Postgres, okay? So how about the MySQL? MySQL, it's the same. So you need to set a bin log format to row, okay? Uh, because also by default, it's not everything is there. Um, and uh, that's what needs to be uh, done, at least there. And you might probably work with the cloud providers. So. Uh, when you have a cloud database from the cloud providers, like from the AWS or GCE or, uh, uh, I don't know, Azure, then uh, it's also possible. And most of them, are they're having, um, uh, you know, configurations and the way how to turn it on. And it shouldn't, it, it's not a problem because the CDC is quite, nowadays, quite popular concept. So um, if you would like to know what exactly needs to be done, I, I, I will send you to the Debezium um, webpage because in the Debezium, you might, you might find the exactly information because there are connectors to the different databases for example mysql or postgres so here you've got the postgres one and here is exactly instructions what needs to be done to make it happen okay so if you've got amazon then you need to for example a logical replication set to one and then you need to check this wal level as i mentioned so it, it's not always that easy uh, but sometimes you need to do something and uh, of course there's instructions how to turn it on in Azure and uh, and uh, you need there's a the way if you would like to manually install the plugin inside your uh, Postgres there's also instructions okay so uh, it's sometimes it's not that easy but I'm not going to cover all the requirements and for every single database because it's quite complicated but trust me if you are using the DB from the cloud providers, it's also possible um, and you can use it without the problems, okay? So now let's try to uh, have some demo. Let's uh, try to have some um, some small um, CDC examples, okay? So I've got a really small example written in a Go, uh, in fact, not in Java. I've got in Java as well, but um, uh, because of the low level things, I will show you the one in the Go and then we'll couple one in the Java. So for now, let's try to run the uh, database, okay? So you can check, I'll check the um, Docker. So I, for now I have nothing, okay? And now I need to run the, um, the Postgres and uh, because my example is, um, is based on the Postgres. I've prepared the make file with all the required comments. So if we'll, um, if we'll run it, then we've got a make, make a run DB, okay? So now, as you, you may see what is happening on, so now we run the Docker, we expose the port, we set the password, we create a DB, which is that the name, and uh, there is a version of the Postgres 14, and said, which is quite new one, and that's it, we run it, okay? And now we've got uh, another, uh, in another new window, we'll try to, um, turn on the CDC, okay? So uh, we would like to, I've got a small um, uh, application written in a Go, which is based on this uh, PG output, which is a built-in CDC. And here we, we can see that we are trying to create a publication for all the tables. So we are going uh, to create a publication which will analyze all at every table which is inside the database, and then we'll try to figure it out what is happening in the DB. This is like a very um, low-level thing, so I'm, I'm doing um, here um, um, one by one uh, the, info, the, the, the publication and subscription, and then analyze uh, and, and cutting the bytes uh, from the, directly from the DB. So it's quite uh, quite low-level stuff, but let's try to analyze whether it's it's uh, um, uh, it's possible to get all the changes inside inside out code, okay? So if we'll write make run, which runs our application, which is basically go run main, but now we see that we got an error. And this error says that the WA level is, it needs to be set to the logical at least, okay? So it shows that by default, it's not turned on. Even if you will take the Postgres from the Docker Hub, the default one, um, you need to do something to turn the CDC, okay? So let's do that. 
So let's the stop DB, um, which is uh, run. And now let's, uh, okay, let's run it again. Okay, run DB with the uh, WAL uh, turned on, okay? And now we see what happened is that we pass the extra flag, which is minus C um, WAL level equals logical, okay? And now let's try to one again, once again, run our application. Okay, and now it's it's working. Okay, so we've created a, a publication um, a demo app, and now we have uh, also a replication slot, and we've uh, <coughs> um, uh, attached to that slot and created that slot, and now we are listening. Okay, now we are listening for the changes. So let's try to. Um, Let's try to do something with our uh, Postgres. Okay, so the password is password. Now we are inside the DB, okay? Uh, one more important thing before we start is also that for now the DB is empty. So we've got the migration script and now uh, we see that uh, something happened in a database. So what will happen, okay? So let's analyze what, what happened when we run the migration, okay? Here we've got uh, some transaction, like a begin, then we've got a commit begin, and then we've got a relation, truncate, and inset, okay? So there's uh, plenty of different events uh, emitted by, the, that, by our database. And now we see that everything started from the schema migration, okay? So there is a new table, which is a schema migration. Before that, we begin with the, and commit, it's a, uh, uh, I'm not um, analyzing exactly, but this is uh, creating a new table. And then uh, we see that the version of the table of the, of the DB is for now one, it's a dirty, then we are inserting some data like Johnny Rambo to the table users. And then we are committing the transactions and then we set the schema migration to one and it's not dirty, okay? So it's now the uh, migration is done properly, okay? But it's what it was quite, uh, you know, a bit maybe um, um, complicated example. So let's try to analyze the regular insert, okay? So if we'll type this PSQL and then password, and now let's try to insert, okay? Let's now check whether this uh, uh, Johnny Rambo is there, okay? So if we select from users, we see that John Rambo is there, okay? So if we'll insert into users, um, okay, let's uh, first name and the last name, values uh, like, uh, oops, okay, uh, Jan, let's go with Kowalski, okay? Voila, we've inserted something. And what happened? Uh, we got the event begin, which is a transaction. Then we've got the relation, which is uh, basically the, um, it's an event that this particular relation is going to be affected. Then we've got the insert. Um, and then table users is affected with this five fields. Okay, it's updated at ID, first name, last name, and created with the values. Okay, so this is first name, which type of string, and then there's a value. And then we've got another info that someone, someone committed this transaction. So here is a, everything which we need to know, and it's quite low level, it's based on the PG output and it's working as you can see. And also if we've got uh, updates or a delete, let's call it, let's run the delete, okay? So if we we'll delete something, um, uh, okay, from users where ID equals to, for example, Johnny Rambo. Okay, so now we see that uh, we are, Beginning the transaction, we are deleting. Of course, this is empty, as I mentioned, because only the ID is passed and then the transaction is committed. Everything which we need to know what happened in the database is there. And um, uh, it's quite quite easy, even if you would like to run it or write this code from scratch based, in, based on this PG output plugin from the Postgres. Uh, probably if you will go with, um, uh, with um, with a Java world, then of course there's the one tool which rule them all. When it comes to the CDC, which is um, which is um, Debezium, okay. So if you would like to run the same thing with the Debezium, you might do that in a Java um, in the following way. It's very very 
semi like a similar thing so it's, it's just um, gets all the changes inside particular db and particular table which is called users and then just printing them to the um to the on, on the screen okay so we need to set a connector which is a postgres connector and then uh, configure that it did database uh, credentials and that's it okay and then you will very easy with the dbzium um, this is a built-in uh, dbzium way to handle the events from the database i will cover the types of the dbzium um, deployments later on but for now this is a uh, something similar which is written in a java so dbzium engine you're creating that based on the properties run it and when something happened then you get the records you're printing that out and you need to run that um, in the um, in the like an asynchronously way. And that's it. Okay. A very, very easy few lines of code and you've got your own CDC. Okay. Um, so that was about the demo. Let's jump again into the presentation. So about the tooling. So I've shown you the Divisium. I showed you the example written in the, uh, in the, um, based on the pg output so now let's talk about other uh, things which are on the market which might help you to improve your architecture okay so dbism this is the most popular thing so if you type the cdc in the internet probably you will get some links from the dbism okay it's most popular it has uh, support for lots of databases um, uh, it's uh, based on the transactional logs, so this uh, what what I've shown you. It also has um, um, supporting the snapshotting, which is um, uh, something which is uh, which you might uh, think of. Because for now, I, I've shown you that all the changes which are uh, created uh, by the CDC are happening now. But what will happen if you've got old system and you've got a database in the table which has lots of records already there? So then you need to have also the way how to snapshotting that. So how to uh, create the series of the events which are uh, which can describe the current state of the table. Okay, and to do that you need to have some kind of snapshot. So then you're doing snapshotting and from from now on you might get every single event to get the information yeah but before that uh, it's also important to make a snapshot and the dbzium is supporting that which is uh, like a killer feature if you would like to run from from something from scratch then then probably uh, the dbzium is a better better way how, how you can do that okay and there are three ways of of operation three modes of operation so yeah there's the kafka connect the dbzium server and embedded yeah embedded this is something which i'll show you but uh, let's let's cover that in a minute and of course it's open source um it's very popular and created by Red Hat and supported by the Red Hat. Uh, it's battle tested. It's used by lots of uh, companies all around the world. Uh, but there is, for example, Alibaba kernel, which is a MySQL CDC, which is uh, a bit more primitive, but it has four times, you know, uh, stars on the GitHub. <laughs> That's uh, you know something um, which which I've encountered, but you know. Um, uh, the stars not not telling you always the truth. So let's uh, cover the ways and the modes of the operation. So the first one is the server. Server is like a standalone thing. Okay, so now you've got a standalone uh, component which is run, which is uh, run the connectors, or run the codes, which is getting something from the DB and putting that somewhere else. Okay, uh, but what's important is like a, like a standalone deployable component. This um, Divisium server it's scalable, it's fault tolerant, it has lots of nice features. So um, a very nice thing then you can have a connectors and then the place where the data might be the sync and a very very nice nice thing then you've got a kafka connect so you might also reuse it of um, uh, the dbzium as, as a place as a, a connector um, in a kafka so it's going to automatically analyze or, or read the data from the mysql or postgres or any other supported database and then put them in the apache kafka yeah and so uh, then you might have uh, you know other sync connectors or you might have your own uh, apache kafka code or you might read it manually or whatever you want yeah but uh, it also works very well with the kafka 
And uh, embedded, this is something which I've uh, shown you. So you, you might just read the events from the database, so what has uh, changed uh, directly in your app. Yeah. So it's like a building thing, and then you are consuming all the events, and uh, you don't need to have any Kafka or anything. Yeah. So that's that's uh, something for I, I would say smaller projects. So if someone would like to, for example, start from something more primitive, or uh, if someone uh, you know follows the monolith first for example approach when uh, you would like to first start from from writing your codes and everything should be a big monolith and then split it into services then it's also the nice way how you can do that and uh, if uh, we'll talk about the databases which are supported then we've got the mongo mysql postgres sql server oracle db2 and there are also the cassandra and vitis which which are incubating um, and uh, incubating means that they are supported but the API might change okay um, and about the Kafka uh, just two slides but uh, Kafka is very important in when you when we are talking about the Debezium and the old CDC why because um, it's a ideal thing where you can put the events okay so if you would like to have uh, and if you would like to improve your architecture then more or less you need to be sure that that these records are ordered and this is one of the and the fault tolerance yeah so the, these two things are the most important when it comes to the cdc so if you would like to then consume the events it's very important what is the uh, what is the order so you may imagine that what will happen if you if you have a CDC and you are building your view and you've got two updates and uh, the updates are um, somehow <clears throat> um, one is uh, overwriting the second and but for example if you've got a bank account and one is um, setting the, the the amounts and one is adding then the second is uh, subtracting and then the order is different then you might have a different uh, amounts finally at the account so it's very very important to have the order so that's where the kafka shines yeah to preserve um, order and also be a fault tolerance and everything is written in the disk so that's nice and it's, it's usually when you are using the cdc and the dps you're, you're also you know taking from the from kafka from the shelf yeah uh, but there is a plenty of alternatives and um, there is a quite of uh, big projects like Zendesk Maxwell or Airbnb has its own framework and Yelp has its own framework. Uh, these are quite bigger concepts and there is also a huge list of um, sometimes small like uh, something similar which I've shown you that this is small like CDC project which is just reads the data and, and putting somewhere but some of them are more more complex and um, these are these are uh, mysql things and there is also similar list about the postgres and uh, and there is also something something which i would like to um just note but i to be honest i'm not sure whether it's going to be open source okay so db log something new something like uh uh, which was introduced by Netflix and they said that they were not happy with the Debezium and they are creating something new they call it DBlog uh, it was it should be open source even in the previous year but it's not never even for now so they are claiming that they've got something new but it's like hard to say whether they are going to open source it or not but they've created a nice article how it works and uh, what are the problems with them Debezium most of them um, where the connected with the snapshots okay so if you would like to have a um, uh, take the huge db or a table and make uh, and perform the snapshot then you are used usually you are blocking the rights to that table and um, they are created the this db log just to uh, have no logs okay so now they are creating the the way how to create uh, and snapshotting the tables and uh, creating the series of the events based on the even the big tables without the logs okay so that's the big change and that's what is uh, in the details described in the article so i, I highly recommend to to read it and uh, what else 
So now let's go to the architecture and some concepts which uh, are based on the CDC, okay? So uh, streaming, this is uh, something which might be obvious for you because it's like a, uh, very easy to grasp, okay? So if you've got a legacy app even, or a regular application, like a three-layer application with the DB, there's a one Docker or a not Docker or a VM old application, and then DB, and now you would like to send um, the event somewhere else. So usually instead of touching the, the application and sending that to the new one, you might just add the CDC to the DB, yeah? Just rest that DB with the proper configuration and then you've got, uh, uh, for example, CDC which emits the event to the um, to the Kafka or to the any other queue and then, for example, feed your elastic search or feed anything else which um, uh, requires the uh, streaming and which uh, might help you with, um, uh, you know, kind of um, event-based architecture because it's um, <clears throat> a very common approach that you don't want to, for example, touch the old stuff or you can even don't know how to touch it because it's so old. And for now, like with the CDC concept, you might you might change the architecture, improve it just by, uh, just by you know, touching the DB and and um, you know running the cdc so that's nice and very very nice things and, and i highly uh recommend you to do that you can even have a like uh, i don't know the uh, regular uh, wordpress php application then you might attach some nice uh, logic to that uh, based on the cdc you I mean you know you it's like your imagination what you might do with this uh, stream of the events from the DB, which uh, is, uh, you know, touched by, by your app. And uh, what's very important is, uh, and where it, it really shines is the communication between the services or microservices. So let's imagine to, that you've got a user service uh, that is just, you know, creating the account or something. And then the insert is goes to, to the DB and then to, but at some point someone said, okay, but now we are going to um, uh, have a nice fancy auto completion. So probably Elasticsearch would be nice uh, because we would like to have, uh, I don't know, you know, that you type two or three letters and then you have um, uh, auto completion of the full users, yeah, inside your form in the uh, web page, yeah. So probably you need to. Uh, introduce Elasticsearch for that. And then someone said, okay, maybe for now, we need to also have um, some analytics DB. So now uh, someone wants to know how many users is in a, and how many of them is um, created per month, per year or something. And then you need to write another um, piece of code insert your user service, which is anti-pattern, okay? So this, this is a bad design. So you shouldn't do that. And one of the creator of the Debezium and the main um, uh, uh, contributor, which is Gunnar Morling, um, uh, writes in it's a piece of the uh, of the book, which is quite fresh. Uh, and his proverb is that friends don't let friends to do dual, dual rights, okay? So what's the problem? The problem is that if you are, have a two systems and um, the systems are like a DB, it's maybe not that hard, but if you get DB and, um, and, uh, and the queue, then it's a hard to uh, preserve the consistency of the data to be sure that this particular message or information or a user was sent to both of them and the, both of them are written it well. And it's like um, uh, you are 100% sure and cons that the data is consistency, okay? This is a, a problem which is quite uh, often solved with the um, uh, two-phase commit, but uh, let's you know, dig uh, to that deep, okay? but. Uh, the very important thing is that this is bad thing. We shouldn't do that. It's much better to do that in that way. Now you've got um, isolation. So the user service has no idea about the analytics service or a Kafka or Audi DB or a Elasticsearch is doing just one thing and it's, it does it very well, okay? So it inserted something to DB and then via and with the CDC, uh, you are entering the event uh, architecture and then you are sending that to every other 
uh, you know, client which subscribe to these uh, changes. Okay, that's important. That's nice. This is the place where where the CDC shines. Okay, so it it allows to allows us to to um, you know to coupling the services. Okay, and to make them uh, quite independent and writing only to the one place and do not care about the other services and that's how it should be so uh yeah propagate the, the data between the different services without coupling okay and also uh, one uh, important and nice architecture pattern is outbox okay so outbox is a, um, a problem which i've already mentioned that if you need to update one database and send the data via the uh, queue to the different system and you need to be sure that this was you know sent properly sent and the database also was updated properly and um, uh, to make it happen there is also an outbox pattern so you, you imagine that the with cdc you might create a new that table which is create uh, which is uh, called outbox and then you inserting the data to both tables to the outbox and to, for example, users. And uh, you do that in a single transactions. And now with that, you are sure that the data was um, atomic and consistency in these two tables. And then uh, you are modifying only one in single place and only one day database. But uh, here, what is important that you've got users in the outbox. And if you've got both of them, you are have uh, the transactions on those these two tables and then two events are emitted one for example uh, uh, with the users if the the cdc is tracking the users then the users might go somewhere and the outbox might go somewhere sometimes you are doing that um, uh, and tracking only the outbox okay um table so now in the cdc you're saying that i don't care about the user changes i care about the outbox because in the outbox pattern uh, this is the most critically important thing so the message which should be sent to other systems okay and it might be not only the users or the changes of the users but maybe it might be some logic so types so informations or anything which needs to be sent to the other systems and with this outbox pattern you might be 100 percent sure that DB is consistent and the proper systems are uh, notified with the proper information, which you may you might imagine, yeah, what what to put in the outbox outbox, yeah. Whether it's uh, something like a notifications or analytics, up to you. Okay, so that's that's also nice things. And the strangler strangler is um, a pattern how to uh, migrating the legacy systems incrementally. So usually you've got the API gateway in front. Um, like a router, router, and then step by step, like a strangler fig, and remove old components to new one. Okay, and it's really nice if you got huge legacy applications, you would, you and you would like to step by step move them to the new one. Okay, um, and uh, of course. Uh, the same data might be modified on both systems, the new one and the old one. So this kind of synchronization between the, uh, this legacy and new one might be done with the CDC. So basically, we start from you know um, having a legacy and some, for example, small uh, microservice here and then legacy, and you're taking the things from the legacy and putting them in the modern. At the end, you've got only modern things. How it works? If you've got a legacy app, then you've got with the CDC, you might have a, a router, which uh, at some points you, you move the data to the old or to the new um, or a request to the new and to the old system. And then the, the, with the CDC, you might synchronize the data between the database, the new one and the old one. Yeah, And uh, one by one, you might uh, you might like ends with only the changes um, in the and and ends with everything rewritten to the new one, yeah? And the challenges, about the challenges, uh, sometimes not everything is uh, set, sent, especially in the MySQL, there is a problem with that. You need to sometimes be hit by the log compaction. So if you've got a couple of events with the same ID, they might be uh, overwritten and uh, removed by the Kafka, rather. So be, uh, be aware of that, Co configure proper 
Kerlock compaction on Kafka. And then uh, when you are uh, reading something or especially snapshotting and reading the whole tables, then you might block the writing to the table, which also more, may be problematic. Okay. And then, um, yeah, the, 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 uh, the thing which was um, uh, uh, you know done by the by the Netflix, so so the triggers and the dumps um, should be uh, and are, are needed to make them more frequently, and they shouldn't block the tables. That's also the problematic thing. Okay, yeah, same same thing here. So to sum things up, um, CDC, I guess, uh, hopefully I show you that, that it's easy to grasp and uh, it enables uh, really nice features like replication, like a streaming, like auditing and, you know, improve your architecture. And uh, if you probably in a Java developer, then probably you need to um, take uh, some time to learn the Debezium because it's really nice and try to analyze whether the DB log is going to happen or not. And uh, that's it. Thanks for uh, for being with me. And uh, I guess that's it. So so if you have any questions, probably you've, you've got that. So, 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 so